Hello, this is Max Drake. Um, pardon me, I've got a little bit of a cold at the moment. I just want to talk to you about um, uh, 3D PDFs. And the thing which I want to talk about at this point in time is using JavaScript with it. Now, when I first started using 3D PDFs, I was really keen on using JavaScript. I just never figured out how to do it. I've just been watching some simple videos on JavaScript and uh, forms, and uh, I thought I'd give it another try. So this is now my attempt at doing this. Now, the first thing to do is that you need to um, initialize JavaScript. Now, I'm using a, a Adobe Acrobat Pro. Inside Reader, you can actually um, use JavaScript. Unfortunately, because Reader's just a reader, you can't actually make objects, but you can actually go in and test some of your code out inside Reader, um, and we're talking about that shortly so the first thing you can do is go control k and this brings up your preferences thing which it gets through the file thing and if you go into java you can actually enable javascript debugger after acrobat is restarted so when you click on that button you go and do your save okay then you've got a reboot <coughs> restart um, Adobe and then it'll be up and running and mine's already running at this point in time so once it's actually running inside the toolbars uh, the tools area there you'll see this javascript bit come through so here we've got the javascript debugger now if you go to another one you can use a javascript then or go Control j and it brings up your debugger form here now initially i was doing some quite painful stuff now uh before we go any further i just want to say so there's javascript is up and running inside the document at this point in time now what do we want to use it for so for some of the things that we use it i've actually got the four rod actually got this metal set up and then i've got it set up as isometric and then i've got another view set up as isometric with no view and set that view up and then i've got a plan view and a section view and another section view etc et so oh there's my comments so that's where that comes through. So one of the things that I only thought JavaScript would do, we can turn the roofs off um, and we can turn them back on again. So that's easy. We don't actually have to come off, go and find specific views or that. We don't have to come into here, select that particular object, go into parts option, go um, uh, hide, etc., etc., And the same on that one there. Go into there and go um, uh, parts option, uh, hide. Uh, and that didn't work parts option hide there we go and we go roof on there and the roof come back another thing which i've got in it on these buttons here is i've got one saying illustration so show me it in a different way here so again the illustration is i'm just coming through and i could have gone through illustration through there or i can go to solid outline or i could go to etc etc or i can go to transparent through there so i can go to transparent i've got to think so you know, in some ways, you could come up here if you're reasonably familiar with 3D PDFs and actually start setting it up in the way that you wish to view um, the images and stuff like that. But I was suddenly thinking for users, how can I simplify this to make it easier and more accessible? Sometimes on bigger models, they can be quite slow. So the nice thing to do is if you can actually have a few of these pre-set up like that, they can quickly go through and find some of the information you want. So that's why I have things like plan views where those sorts of things uh, are, are, you, quickly you can go to instead of actually um, trying to get, use difficult to do. So inside the JavaScript debugger, one of the things that we can actually do here, I'm just going to blow a bit of this data away through here. Um, uh, that one I'm still testing at this point in time is that we can go through and we can run a bit of code so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to select a bit of code there and i'm going to go so sorry if i'm only doing one line of code i can actually just have my cursor on that line anywhere on that line and press Control enter and uh, it should run that code and at the bottom it should say transparent so it's actually changed it to transparent so uh, if I just come into here and rotate, you'll see it's turned to transparent. Now, if I just go back into that code again, and then just say illustration. So again, for this one here, I just need to have my um, cursor on that line and go control enter, and it's gone to uh, illustration mode. So that's one thing that we can do. And uh, this is another one. If we want to do a couple of lines of code, we can actually just select two of the lines and go control enter and uh that one ain't going to work because we need the roofs on to do it and we need to be in solid and oh sorry no it's the doors that are actually doing that one so if we just spin around 
on that one. I don't like that one, but I prefer that one there. It's easier to control. You can see some of the doors have come through here. So I've actually said, make these material objects, set the color as that. Um, I think that's the one that I did. No, that's geometry seven. So I can do this one here, which will color one of the things, uh, one of the roof threads. So I'm going to press Control Shift after selecting that one there. And if I just put the roof on, oh, uh, I'm in the wrong plan. So I'm going to go into that one there. And if I'm in roof on, and uh, what was that one there? That one didn't work, I don't think. I will try it. Control Enter. Uh, that one didn't work. There are ones here, but that's it. You can actually test, and you see if there's something's happened, it's giving you a result down the bottom here. So if I just go back through, and I'm going to do this one here. Uh, this is the door one, and I'm going to take the door ones which were red before, and I'm going to. Sorry, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to turn the doors green. So any number, or we do it partially green. So we're going to go point down 7. Any number between 0 and 1. So I'll now select that and go Control Enter. And we'll see those doors are now turned green. So that's the, the three numbers on there, uh, a red, green and blue so you get your mixes so that you get your your colors through there so that's what's actually doing there so we we're actually running in the javascript debugger to actually test the bit of code before we put it onto a button now again how do we actually get those buttons on there the simple way that we get our buttons on there is that we come into this interactive area through here and we add a button and uh i'm actually just going to go uh, onto here and uh, select object I'm just going to do that one and just delete that one and we're just going to add a button and we're going to drag it and drop it through here a couple of things with the button that button for give the theme of it nice to it's a sort of that's what the codes attached to so it's not if I actually just step out of here and I'm just going to go and touch something else and come through here touch something else you'll see there there's no text attached with that although there was text before when we actually go into here this had me buggering around for ages. You've got to go into options and give it a label. And I'm just going to call it button. And then, uh, so it's got there. And in the general, it's called a button. And it's got an appearance. So there you can give it uh, a, a primitive color. And you can give it a fill color. And you can have the font size of that. And you can give that a color. And oh, we'd want something stronger than that. So let's go for a dark blue. Close. Oh, bugger and uh, if I just go back to there and in the position that fixes the position and you can lock the position and all the things in there and the last thing is the action with the button so here on a mouse up we can say a whole lot of actions so we can actually execute a menu item open a web link so you can attach a web link to these sorts of things but what we're interested in doing is running a javascript so we run a javascript we add and it creates an area where we can put some javascript and we can go okay and then if we click down here so now if we actually just close that up again that files attached to this button now the button there is that we can edit that javascript to go through there and edit we can't test it just there so, but we can test it inside the JavaScript code. And uh, another way that we can reach into there, instead of going back and re-editing all of that and go, going back into the button, so if we came out again, we'd actually have to go into interactive objects, select the object, select that one there, go into there, go and find the action, go and do that and edit that, which is very, very tedious. Um, and I found a quicker way of doing it, which you just um, get out that selection option straight away. And if you just go into the JavaScript here and uh, edit all JavaScript, it just gives you a list. Now, it doesn't actually tell you which buttons attached to which, but it does actually have the code into here. So that's quite handy if you just want to grab a bit of code there, copy, and then just put it in the debugger. So you can actually just bang that onto the end of your debugger and uh, V and just grab it there and just go control enter and does it work it's the roof turning off for those particular items so that's all I want to say at this point in time that's how just to get JavaScript working oh sorry and the last couple of last little things that I want to do with JavaScript through here 
is that there's this document that you can find and you'll find it if you just search for it. It's a JavaScript for Acrobat 3D Annotation API reference. It's it bloody difficult to use. Um, but anyway, notionally, so that allows you to actually do a bugger. I didn't want to do that. Um, uh, oh, last. Um, there we are. Oh good, I'm in there, don't worry. So um, I hope that's been of interest to you. Next video, I'll go into a little bit more detail on the actual JavaScript that I'm actually doing and how I'm doing it and how I'm getting objects inside there. This I just wanted as a quick overview because of the fact that um, uh, the video ended up being too long. Anyway, thank you very much for watching it. If you enjoyed the, 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 the video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.